Yikes. Okay, so technology minus people. Let's go with technology. A remarkable colonial laboratory from the Taurian colonies shares new insights about the Tabis star system. Okay, cool. So they're back on the, the crabs now. That's cool. I'm glad that they found crabs on the new planet that they're on uh, that look exactly like the crabs from the old planet. <laughs> Sorry, I, I poke fun. But it, but really, like I'm, I'm loving like the complexity of the fact that we've now set a society back to the Iron Age from the Nuclear Age. This is exactly the kind of thing I'm worried about happening on Earth. Uh, if we lose the ability to have, like, access to electricity, then bit, pretty much everything we own is going to go, and 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 we're just going to have to deal with that. We're going to be back in the Iron Age. All right. Rama Scholar States. So let's go back to the Rama. The peaceful utopian. All right. They're sending some signals into space. Let's see how this works. Let's Maybe we have enough to afford a good signal this time. A brand new up-tempo sound using electrical amplifiers breaks cultural barriers and is blasted all over terrestrial radio. The music is so wildly popular, it becomes the dominant sound broadcast from Tau Ceti 3. I am the innovator, I am the originator, I am the emancipator, I am the architect of rock and roll. Rest in peace, little Richard, you amazing man. All right. Let's see here. So we can boost the signal. Which is think what I think we should do. This would be really interesting. Humans are probably going to come in contact with the Iron Age. Uh, I forgot what they're called. They're not Rama anymore. But the Iron Age plant people before they come in contact with the Rama. It would be really weird. So rock and roll conquers the souls of the Rama and becomes a fundamental part of the culture on Tau Ceti III. The music is perpetually broadcasted in all directions of the galaxy. Let's see here. So it's funny, inadvertently some of the transmissions were focused on, focused on the Tabby star system. It's like almost like they're going to become the gods of the of the the people they sent off because they're not going to remember or know how all of this was. Um, let's go for the signal boost. Let's send it out in all directions. Let's let's spend that money. There it goes. So there's our signal boost. It's coming out. Uh, I know that if you if you do the the lower level one, it just focuses on a regular. Uh, it focuses on one direction, usually picking the, the closest civilization that, that you, as the Galactic Gardener, Gardener, know exists. So the Rama never made contact with ever, other civilizations, but the... Oh, it says the Rama again. Interesting. Let's click on this. In a state-of-the-art laboratory in Tau City 3, the Rama discovered new scientific insights. Cool. Hmm, let's go for more Utopia. The Rama created a new style of architecture. Great. Let's see here. So, okay, they're the Torian. Uh, but it says, still says they're called Rama. Let's go here. One of Rigel's inner planets is accumulating a new atmospheric layer. Let's go to Trappist. An asteroid impact destroys a dominant animal species on Trappist Prime. Dang it. I was really hoping that they would be up there. Let's see. I, don't, I was working on Frogstar over here. Generations of dead organisms turn to fossil fuels deep in the crust of Frogstar 1. I'm going to just go right into Tea Garden and see if we can get this one going. Earthquakes open an enormous rift below one of Tea Garden's prime sea regions. An external planetoid enters an orbital pattern in the Tea Garden system. Gosh, I'm really wanting another species right here. Okay. Human dynasties. Reduction in soul. Okay, what does this mean? Frugal representat representatives. Trapper representatives rule the human dynasties with a sense of moderation and efficiency. Thinking of future soul generations, they try to slow down the resource consumption of the humans and preserve finite agricultural land. By sowing frugality, we reap liberty, a golden harvest. Alright, so we can hit a dead end with that and gain some synthesis back. What is this? Frugality becomes the cornerstone of American culture. Oh, sorry, American. My bad. Of human culture. Trapper representatives who embrace moderation are admired and is seen as some as a crucial part of leadership among the dynasties of Seoul. We'll gain more agricultural land, or hmm, or we can send it off to the next generation. 
I think let's go ahead. I, I 30 30 synthesis is a pretty good spot to be. I don't really want to spend it on this, so let's go with regular development. Um their influence on dynasties is sold dwindles fast. They don't like the cheap the the trapper representative. So let's go for the regular one here. We'll gain some more agricultural land. Let's gain some more people here. The steely areas of the humans become a center of trade and commerce. Hmm. I think we're gonna I'm really gonna try and get Tea Garden. I'm I'm assuming that that's why we can click on the other planets and mess with them, is in order to try to foster life there. So let me go here. Oops, I'll go back. I wanted the Nope. I guess not. I wanted can it let's see if I can can I get it? There we go. I wanted that one. A minor planet is formed from ice and debris in the tea garden system. Natural global warming dramatically impacts the climate in Tea Garden Prime. Yes! Sapient life evolved on Glee Sea. Wait a minute, that's not Tea Garden. Is it? No. Oh, that's so funny. I think Glee was like over here. I don't think I ever really clicked on Glee. Glee Am I saying that right? Glee Yeah, we just have to put the emphasis on the I. Glee a life form on Gliese Sea started making simple tools and developed a rudimentary language, but which species will form a Stone Age civilization in the Gliese system? Alright. What do we have? So that is why I wanted to keep the extra synthesis, because there we go. We can have a balanced species here if we choose. So, you'll have to foster these creatures too. Alright. Galice, a red dwarf star, is orbited by the desert planet Galice Sea and various rocky planets. The iron oxide in the atmosphere gives the rocky desert of the planet Galice Sea a distinct reddish color. All animals on the planet's surface carry additional water reservoirs in specialized organs so that they can survive in the desert. So essentially, camel people. Uh, huge hypersaline lakes divide the land regions, and between their salt crystal shores, vast forests of transparent flower creatures or flower trees are flourishing. So the standard species. Ooh. What is that? The Rao. No, I can't do another rolled R. We already did that with the Rama. The Rao. Aggressive and solitary, these naturally armored creatures inhabit barren wastelands. Ooh, the prune. I remember them from the demo. The prune. Peaceful observers, these gentle herds of four-eyed, horse-like humanoids roam the wide rock deserts. Or... What? The car. Always hungry and merciless, these nightmarish avian creatures rule the sky. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, crud. Well... I'm partially torn by the prune just because I had them in the demo and and I, I have a fondness for just the way they look. Oh my gosh. I think it's really between these two. I mean, these guys are cool looking, but I don't think we, we don't really gain much from this. Hmm. Always hungry and merciless, these nightmarish avian creatures rule the sky. Gosh dang, I'm really... I'm wondering... So this is something that I wonder too about this game. Is how often the species themselves... Like, if I don't pick the prune now, can they show up on another planet? Is that something? Or are they only on this this planet in on... Gillies, uh, Gillies C. I think for a hostile desert planet, I think I'm gonna have to go with the car. Plus, it's just got a cool name, the car. And plus, we'll get some twenty. This is, I, I haven't picked an unbalanced species yet, so because uh, I think that the the last ones I had were a standard species. So let's pick an unbalanced species. It's gonna, we're going to take a hit to all these things. They're going to have a hard time with all of them starting off, but we'll gain synthesis for the universe. Maybe our other planet that we're fostering will, will have something for us. All right. 
On Gilly's Sea, the Car Civilization is born. A depleted land region of Gilly's Sea recovers under the care of car planters. All right, how are the cults doing? Let's figure this out. Are they still called the cults? Enlightenment. Okay, all right, that sounds good. The Holy Base, all right. A city that is rumored to have sacred powers starts drawing spiritualist priests and sages from all corners of Tabby Prime. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. All right. Let's see here. So, for nothing, we can create a civilization pillar, which I think we should do. Because, I mean, there's no point... Because this is going to spend... So this is where the random doesn't always make sense, but in this case, it's really working in our favor. I, I kind of appreciate the random here, because obviously we're getting more utopia, and for nothing. We don't have to pay anything. Dead End will give us 12, which is actually a high number for for nothing here. But let's see here. The holy city becomes a center of spiritual and philosophical debate. Countless data, ba data tapes are created to spread the wisdom to all Taurians on Tabby Prime. Let's do it. Look at all that utopia. Okay. Let's increase their technology. The Taurians mourn the death of a brilliant colonial scientist whose theories advanced the colony. Hmm. I think we'll take some potential casualties and gain some synthesis from that. The Tabby Star System followers manufacture new automatic rifles to equip the fanatic soldiers of the Tarian cults. Da dang it. Get rid of the rifles, people. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Let's do that. Can we build a thriving civilization here in the Tabby Star System? Alright, let me go out. So we got the Car Tribes. A powerful new hunting band is formed on Galice Sea. Cool. I really... So it is, Galice was down there. I really want to get Tea Garden going. I really want this. So a minor Tea Garden planet leaves its orbit and falls into the system's central star. An asteroid impact destroys a dominant animal species on Tea Garden Prime. Gosh, really? That probably are animal species. Hey, an animal species on Tea Garden Prime forms complex social structures. Oh, man, you, you teased. I thought that this was going to be the new animal on this planet, the new species. All right. The Rama Scholar states. Let's see how my, my favorite utopian society is doing. Oh, look, it's Algernon. Massive supercomputers. The Rama create massive analog supercomputers. Gene sequencers that they can use to create dinosaurs. These towering, clicking machines are as big as buildings and require thousands of attendants to operate them. I think there is a world market for maybe five computers. <laughs> Thomas Watson, pre president of IBM. All right. What do we got here? Yikes. So we can gain a lot of tech for 60, though. That is that is so much. That is all of our synthesis. I don't really want to spend that on this. The Rama becomes dependent on these supercomputers to analyze and make all their key decisions. Mastering computer language is the most important task in their society. The machines rush the Rama toward a new digital age, leading to incredible scientific advances. I think we're going to pick that one. We're going to gain some from that. Not have to spend our 60 synthesis points we've got. Um, let's see, what did this do? Okay, so we got some more knowledge here. I'm always going to choose Utopia for them because I want them to try to. I want to max out Utopia. I want to see what happens. All right, let's see here. An army of motorized infantry was defeated by a naval battle fleet of a powerful Rama scholar state. All right, humans, how you doing? All right, they've reached the Cyber Age now. Jeez. And yet they have not left the planet. I mean, the, the Rama have already left the planet, had a complete meltdown of society on another planet, and have re-entered the Iron Age, and they're over here playing video games. Bloody humans. With rapid adv advancements in artificial intelligence and technology-augmented humans, the civilization undergoes drastic change and reaches new milestones in science, engineering, and the arts. He still dreamed of cyberspace, hope fading nightly, all the speed he took, all the turns he'd taken, and the corners he'd cut in Night City, and he'd still see the Matrix in his sleep, bright lattices of logic unfolding across that colorless void. 
Neuromancer by William Gibson. That are that right there totally reminds me of uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep as well. Little Philip K. Dick for y'all. All right. So, for 10 points, we can gain Wisdom, which I think is a pretty fair deal. We'll gain more Utopia and advance our self past. so I think we're going to go for that. Crossing into the realm of AI, humans now have the ability to vastly improve their societies and facilitate communication with faraway beings. However, new technologies present great risks as well, so a little extra wisdom couldn't hurt. <laughs> I feel like it's funny, the Rama have sent out radio signals, and they're probably, they're more likely to make contact with their own species than with the humans. <laughs> Alright, oh, we still have a problem with pests and vermin, that's probably the potential casualties over here. The humans are now able to create endless stele metropolises all over Earth. Metroplexes, not metropolises. The Cyber Age technology gives the humans access to resources on easy to reach planets and moons of the solar system. Nice. Let's go a question mark here. Good, 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 good. All good stuff. Uh, I think more, more casualties went up though. Memes are circulated in the soul system to inspire the humans to preserve environment and resources. Nice. All right, let's go back to the Rama Scholar States. They've reached the digital age. Excellent. iPhones for all. The Rama are now connected via complex computer systems. So this is the same thing that the that the human, the same block of text the humans got as well. So now that they now the Rama have MMORPGs. Okay. So let's see here. We don't have enough for wisdom. I think we might just choose advancement uh cuz that'll benefit them and I really don't want to uh, I mean that's not going to take a huge hit to everything if we choose power. That can take a huge hit, because we're doing pretty good on both of those fronts, and then we can also use that synthesis for later. So let's just see. Advancement. Rama, Rama continue their exploration of space with renewed vigor, navigating the pitfalls of mass consumerism. City planners explore possibilities for genetically modified crops that are safe to eat and also sustainable for farmers in the environment. Or... There we go. Digital technology applied to warfare results in guided missiles, enhanced recon, and remotely piloted combat drones. With autonomous killing machines just around the corner, scholar states could also implement ubiquitous surveillance to keep tabs on their citizens. Yikes. Don't like the sound of that. It's so funny because, the like, on a basic level, the game is pluses and minuses... And you just have to, it's kind of like playing checkers or chess. You just have to decide whether or not your pawn is worth sacrificing in order to make sure that your, uh, your bishop can take the next piece. But, but when they add the flavor text there, that makes it sound so much worse than now we're going to be in like some sort of totalitarian Rama state where they're like following and, and, and watching what everybody's doing. Ugh, I don't know if I like that. Mm, maybe let's go for advancement. Let's just do that. It, like, yeah, I don't. I these are my these are my babies here. I like the Rama. They're my my peaceful. I'm working towards Utopia. I don't want to take a hit to that. Nah, advancement. All right. Let's see. Let's get one here. The Rama are now able to connect large metropolitan areas on a global scale. The digital age technology let the Rama optimize the access to all resources on Tau Ceti 3. Okay. Let's see here. I'm still I'm still trying to get Tea Garden to go here. Let's try this. Last stitch effort here. A once dominant animal species on Tea Garden Prime goes extinct. God damn it. Come on! Come on. Oh, gosh. I totally forgot about the car. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, car. Let's go ahead and check, check you guys out. I should really be fostering you guys and, and be over in your court. Because you're going to be the uh, the child that time forgot over here. You're going to be a forgotten child and you're going to hate me as a parent. All right. Warrior Code. 
The Kar adopt a strict warrior code as they quest for honor and nobility through acts of battle among their rites of passage. How sweet and fitting it is to die for one's country. Horace, a Roman poet. Let's see here. Hmm. So we can gain absolute power, which increases the potential casualties, but also gives us the synthesis that we would like. Regular development, not good. I mean, prevention would be like just a null option here. It doesn't give me anything, but it also doesn't take anything away. Let's see what happens with absolute power. The warrior code becomes the bedrock of car life. Only devoted and honorable fighters can advance in society. Okay. Or, the warrior tradition on Gilly's Sea becomes associated with a newly discovered shrub as its spiritual symbol, which, when consumed, decrease, and decreases the <laughs> aggression of the fighters. So they discover, uh, they discover weed, and, <laughs> and they become docile. Um... No, I think I think we're gonna go all in. These are these are the, they they're not, uh, they're gonna be very brutal at the beginning, and we're gonna eventually have to bring them out of of their brutality at some point. But I think we're gonna go for the warrior code. It becomes the bedrock of their society. Very uh, Klingon, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think we'll take another hit here to potential casualties. On behalf of the Car tribes, a powerful hunting band defeats a horde of club wielders. Interesting. So they're taking on other species here. What else we got? Uh, resources just went up, it looks like. Alright. I like the question marks. Question marks are always good for me. <laughs> I mean, they're not always good, because they can sometimes be bad, but... Ooh, they fill up a new form of artistic expression. Isn't that nice? Let's, uh, let's go for a little more utopia here. Like, I'm, I'm looking for something a little bit more of the middle of the line with them, honestly. They might be a brutalist uh, sort of uh, warrior society, society, but I think that more like more like the Spartans of old, uh, they, they follow sort of the rules of society, and it's democratic regardless. Uh, the car compose an epic poem recounting their history. Ah, let's see. On night we fly, the wings do beat. We grasp our enemies with our feet. We hurl them skyward, skyward. Distant shore, the car empire will rise once more. There's our epic poem for the car tribes here. Maybe say Car Tribes? No, I'd like Car Empire, because that's where we're going to go. Alright, speaking of Car Empire, let's go ahead and raise their tech level here. Ooh, they've got a remarkable wise person that, that is increasing their tech. Um, let's see here. Do I want to take a hit here? Nah, I'm just going to take the regular one. Will enemies from the beyond conquer our world? Let's see here. Hmm. Um, I don't want to take a hit to the tech, especially not right now. They're still in the Stone Age. So let's go ahead and add to their population. They pro founded a promising new clan. What do we got? What's going on? All right, Torian cults. Let's see what's what. Depopulation. Great. This is not good. All right. Poor hygiene. <laughs> the plants have poor hygiene. Oh, Lord. The rise of cities on Tabby Prime and the crowded living conditions in these new suburban centers lead to the spread of diseases and infections. Due to their unawareness of the benefits of proper cleaning, washing, and sanitation, many Torians die an early death. Mankind, which began in a cave and behind a windbreak, will end in the disease-soaked ruins of a slum. H.G. Wells Okay, guys, come on. Wash your bodies or your fronds, or whatever you've got. Um, let's see. So we can take a hit to the population and gain 12 synthesis. The Torians are unwilling or unable to fight their own uncleanliness. Filth and excrement spread diseases in cities. Lifespans are short and bodies are covered in abscesses. Eesh, I think I'm just going to take the prevention. It doesn't cost me anything, uh, and I don't 
I, I'm pretty, doing pretty, I'm feeling comfortable with where the synthesis is at, so I'm going to leave that be. Scholars catch a whiff of the connection between uncleanliness and disease, pun intended. They educate their fellow Torians and convince their leaders of the importance of proper waste management. Okay, let's go for that. All right, let's go for more utopia here. The Torian followers build an astonishing monument on Tabby Prime. It's so interesting because the home system of the Rama is utopian. It's about the same level of utopia, actually. But they they have a utopia based on knowledge. And the, the Torian have a utopia based on religion. And they're from the same like seed here this is like this is like evolution at its finest like over many many years and and distance and time and and resources and all that sort of stuff uh things evolve differently and of course we're seeing the more complex version of that with the sort of how society works uh where in history we see it in bone structure and and other adaptations as well let's see here Potential casualties are okay. I think we'll take a hit to the people here. A territorial dispute in the Tabby Star System is won by an army of Torian fanatic soldiers. Question mark. Hmm. Ooh, we're losing people. The colonial cults of the Tabby Star System demobilizes many Torian fanatic soldiers. Yikes. All right, folks. So now we've got the Kar tribes over here. We've got human uh, humanity here. The Tarian cults that are spawned off of the Rama scholar governments. We now have technically four societies, I think, actually, because this is now a completely different culture. But how do we get them all not only to contact each other, which is the Fermi paradox. They all exist, but they haven't yet contacted each other. But also, how do we bring them all to, to like their final age of development as as society, so we create galactic peace? All right, folks, I'm gonna go ahead and take a break there. If you loved what I was doing here, or if you, even if you just liked it, please go ahead and subscribe so that you can continue to watch the series as it progresses. And uh, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. I, I love to hear from you guys, and I always try to respond. So with that, I hope to see you in the next game.